Hello. What I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to create what's called cascading or dependent menus um, in Microsoft Excel. I'll show you what I mean here. Um, in this cell, I've got a drop down uh, menu, and you can see that that drop down menu allows me to choose one of three possible subjects. Now, you probably know how to create those drop down menus. If not, I'll show you in this tutorial how to do that. But here's the point. In this column, I have another drop down menu. You can see the little button there. But if I click it, nothing appears to pop down. However, in this column, if I choose, say, maths, then in this column, I can now select from a range of options that relate to maths. So there's those four subtopics. If, however, I change the subject on the left to, say, English instead, then the drop down menu in this column changes to show the possible options available. So depending upon what option I choose in this menu, this second menu or cascading or dependent menu will update and change to show you what options are now available. So I'm going to show you how to create the drop down menu in this column and then how to create a cascading or dependent sub menu in a separate column. So I've got a simple spreadsheet set up here. I've not added anything special apart from writing in the word subjects and topics here, just as my headings. And in this cell here, I've colored these cells to make it a bit more clear. Uh, this is where the first drop down menu will appear, the list of subjects. And in this cell, B2, that's where the dependent or cascading menu will appear that will change or update depending upon what I choose from the first menu. So, first of all, in this cell, we'll want that drop down menu of subjects. This is A2. So, somewhere over here, doesn't matter where I put it, I can put it somewhere on this sheet or on another sheet somewhere in this spreadsheet. I could add another sheet and do it there. Uh, but I'm going to write down what would appear in that drop down list. So, my list of subjects. So, let's have English, Maths, and Computing. There we go. Now, what we'll notice here is each cell has its own name, its own address or name. And we can see that in this name box just to the left hand side of the formula bar. So this cell here, of course, is E1. We can work that out by looking at where it is. But in the name box, we can see that name. Here again, we can see E2 from where maths is. But you can change both the name of a single cell by simply deleting say E1 and writing in whatever you want, or you can actually name a block of cells. So what I'm going to do is highlight this block of cells with all the options in, and on this uh, in this name box, I'm going to name that group of cells subjects, and then press enter. So now I've named that group of cells, and I can refer to that group of cells very easily. So let's see how easy it is now to put this drop down menu in this first box. So click on A2 where the menu is going to appear. And then what we need to do is click on the data tab at the top. Once we click on data, come along and find data validation. Once we click on data validation, we have this panel appear and you can see that at the moment it's allowing any value. We can type anything we want into this cell. That's the default, of course. If I change that, though, a drop down list appears and I can now select list. So once we've selected list, we now need to tell it where the list is. Well, we've named our list, so I can simply type it equals subjects. Now, be very careful here. Um, don't forget the equals at the beginning. And also write the word subjects in exactly the same way, or whatever word it is you're using, in exactly the same way as you named this block of cells here. So whatever you called this block of cells, you must write it exactly the same here. Otherwise, it will have absolutely no idea what you mean by that word. So equals subjects, click OK, and that's it. We can now click in this cell and we have a drop down list of those subjects. So that's step one. Now the next step is to put our 
uh, subtopics here. And first of all, just as we had our list of subjects, we need our list of subtopics. So first of all, let's have the English topics in this column. So we'll have verbs, nouns, adjectives, and pronouns. And then in this column, we'll have our maths topics. So we'll have angles, fractions, percentages, and uh, or division. I'm not a maths teacher, so I'm just thinking whatever. Computing, okay, this will be easier. So let's have algorithms, variables, subroutines, and errors. So there we are, that's our list of topics. So here we've got our English topics, here we've got our maths topics, here we have our computing topics. And what we're going to do in the same way that we named this block of cells subjects, we're going to name this block of cells English, because they're the English topics. So it needs to be the same as whatever word we've written in this cell here. So this first menu will choose an option from these three cells here. If we choose this option, then we're going to look up and find a block of cells called whatever is in this cell here. So if we name this block of cells here English, so highlight it, write it again in exactly the same way as I've written it in E1. So I've named that English. So now whenever we choose, well, in a moment anyway, when we've done one other thing, whenever this first menu chooses this word from this block here, we're going to tell it to find a block of cells somewhere in our spreadsheet called English. Well, it's going to find that block of cells there because we've just named it English. We'll do the cell, uh, same here. So we select those cells and we're going to call this Maths. Again, writing it in exactly the same way as I've written it in this cell here. And then our fourth subtopic is Computing. And again, we write it in exactly the same way as we have in this cell here. So once we've done that, the next thing to do is to click in B2 where our subtopic or sub menu is going to be. And again, we click on data and then data validation. And again, we change it from any value to list. But here is the difference. What we're going to do now is put in a, a kind of little formula. So we write equals indirect so equals indirect and then open up brackets and we put in here whatever cell our main menu or higher level menu is going to be. Where is that? Um, our main menu is in A2. So I'm going to write in here A2. Basically what this formula is doing is saying um, this menu will find a list which is indirectly associated with whatever is in A2. So in A2, it's going to look up and find out what word we've got from there. Say it's maths. And it's saying, right, let's find the group of cells called maths and give that as a list. So we click OK. Now we're going to get a slight error message or a warning, really. Um, simply says the source currently evaluates to an error. Do we want to continue? Click yes. All it's saying there is that currently we haven't got anything in A2. There is no uh, main topic, so we can't come up with a subtopic or submenu. That's all it's saying. So just click yes, and that's it. So if I click in this first menu, we get our list of subjects. If I click in the second cell, B2, you can see the little drop down menu there. But if we click it, nothing happens. There is no possibility of choosing a subtopic without having chosen a main topic or main subject. So let's choose English, first of all. So by choosing English in this cell now, it is using that indirect formula to say, ah, we've chosen English. Right, where on the spreadsheet can I find a block of cells called English? It'll find the cells here 
in F1, F2, F3, and F4, and it will show those as a drop-down menu. And there it is. So we've got those English ones that are the group of English cells, the cells named English in that menu. If I change this to, say, computing, then again, this drop-down menu will show the options for computing. You can create a sub-menu um, underneath this sub-menu. So we could have our main subject there, our topics, and then subtopics within that. And the process would be exactly the same. As long as you are naming your groups of cells using the exact same word as the higher level menu will be using, then you can cascade as many times as you want. I hope that's clear. If you have any questions at all or anything's not sure about that, please leave a comment below. I will read the comments. I will respond to comments. And if necessary, I'll elaborate on, on some of the points in a subsequent video. So any questions, any comments, please get in touch. Uh, always happy to help. Uh, any suggestions for future videos, anything you'd like me to cover, always please leave a comment and I will try to do my best. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button before you go. And it'd be fantastic if you found this uh, video useful to um, just give it a quick thumbs up. That would be brilliant. Um, thank you very much indeed for watching and hope to see you in another video. Bye for now.